All right, let's look at multiplying decimals. So same rules apply. If the signs are different, answer is negative. Signs are the same, answer is positive. So with this one, we have 0.2 times negative 3.6. So we're going to write it vertically. So I'll go 3.6 and I'll put a 0.2. Um, one thing I want to note out, this dot right here, that means multiplication. You don't use the x unless you go vertically, you can use the x. Um, reason being is when we get into algebra next unit, the letter x will get mis uh, mistaken for a multiplying sign, and the letters are very significant in algebra. So, we're going to go 3.6 times 0.2. First thing you're going to do is ignore all the decimals. 6 times 2 is 12, put a 2, carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Now, we want to count how many numbers are behind a decimal. In this case, we have the 6 and the 2. So we come over to the right of our answer, and we count over two spots, 1, 2, and we'll put our decimal spot in front of the 7. Now, since our signs were different, our answer will be negative. So negative 0.72 is the answer, or you could also put your answer in as negative 0 0.72. Either one of those answers is going to be correct. It does not matter. It's the same thing. With our next one, we have two negative numbers, so our answer is going to be positive. So let's line them up. 3.22, and we'll also do 1.5. Now notice, when we multiply, we don't have to line up our decimal points. That's only with adding or subtracting. You can. It's not going to make things a world of difference. If you do, just make sure you fill them with zeros, um, but it's not required. So, <clears throat> 5 and 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 5 and 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Carry the 1. 5 and 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. Now we're going to add a 0, and we're going to go to our 10 spot. So we'll go 1 and 2 is 2, 1 and 2 is 2, 1 and 3 is 3. Go ahead and add everything up together. We get a 0, a 3, an 8, and a 4. Now we're going to count. We have 1, 2, 3 numbers behind the decimals. So we we'll move over 1, 2, 3. So our answer will then have the decimal point there. So our final answer will be 4.83. You do not have to put the decimal to the right of, uh, I'm sorry, the zero to the right of three. And in fact, if you do, it will be marked wrong because there's no need for it. It's just a zero value. We don't have to put it in. 4.83, it's positive because our two numbers were negative. For the last one, we have two positive numbers, so our answer will be positive. So we will do 2.12 times 3.1. 2 and 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2. Put a 0. Don't forget to put the 0 in when you move over to the next number. 3 and 2 makes 6, 3 and 1 is 3, 3 and 2 is 6. Go ahead and add up across. 2, 7, 5, 6. Now we count. There's 1, 2, 3 numbers behind a decimal. So we will count 1, 2, 3. It will be 6.572. There you go.